Banking, the finance industry, uh, always seemed like relatively high-skilled work to me. I mean, something's got to justify those huge salaries, right? But if you think about the last six months or so in banking, it doesn't seem like that hard a job anymore. In fact, it's starting to seem like kind of the best job ever. Think about it. In the last six or eight months, first, they augured their entire business into the ground. As penance, they took retention awards, bonuses, as reward for basically sinking the world economy. Then, because they'd done such crackerjack jobs, the banks got buffrickin' zillions of government dollars to save them. And now, now they're doing exactly what they want with that money, which apparently includes hosting telephone rallies against President Obama's favored policies, namely the Employee Free Choice Act. Our banks, literally our banks, yours and mine, we own them, they are ginning up the opposition to making it easier, easier for people to join unions in this country. Sam Stein at Huffington Post reports that Citigroup, which received three separate infusions of federal bailout money, yesterday hosted a private conference call about the union bill. A city analyst moderated the call, and she and the guests on the call railed against the legislation. City says officially that they have no position on EFCA. They just... You know, hosted the call. In October, Bank of America, B of A, now known as the Bank Made of America's Taxpayer Money, celebrated its $25 billion bailout by hosting its own conference call with business leaders against EFCA. Do you remember Bernie Marcus, the co-founder of Home Depot, on that call? Hopefully, calls like this will we'll stir up the pot. This is a demise of a civilization. This is how a civilization disappears. If a retailer has not gotten involved with this, if he has not spent money on this election, if he has not sent money to Norm Coleman and all these other guys, should be shot, should be thrown out of their god jobs. As a shareholder, if I knew the CEO of a company wasn't doing anything on something that was gonna have a dramatic effect on my business, I'd sue the son of a Charmed, I'm sure. That was back in October. That Bank of America call, also the city call yesterday, they were paid for by you and me. Joining us now, he who must be obeyed, Sam Stein, Washington, Washington, <laughs> excuse me, White House correspondent for Huffington Post. Sam, hey. it's nice of you to come back on the show. Thank you for letting me tease you. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Citigroup co-hosting a private conference call about the Employee Free Choice Act. Uh, City claims they've taken, <laughs> quote, no position on the bill. So I got to ask you, did they also host speakers on that call who were in favor of the legislation as well? Uh, no, they didn't. Now, I just got word, and I haven't confirmed it yet, that they are going to actually host a conference call with union officials next week as a sort of repentance for what happened uh, yesterday. Uh, so they are taking steps to rectify the measure. Uh, that said, they weren't planning on doing it up until about, I don't know, a couple hours ago. So they weren't planning on getting both sides of the uh, coin represented to the retailers that they're providing analysis to. You, um, this was your scoop on Citigroup today. It was also your scoop on Bank of America doing the same thing back in October, also reported by you on Huffington Post. After you exposed yeah. Bank of America for doing this, uh, did they ever follow up? Have they kept doing this? Yeah, there, there was a report today uh, on Dow Jones that Bank of America hosted a Employee Free Choice Act uh, call, uh, ostensibly to analyze the effects of the legislation on the business community. But uh, what you see are bailout recipients not shying away from a legislative battle that uh, critics say they shouldn't even be uh, partaking in. Well, Sam, let me ask you about another complication here with Citigroup, because on sure. Tuesday of this week, Citigroup controversially downgraded Walmart's rating. Uh, they said that it was over fears that the Employee Free Choice Act yeah. uh, might pass. Is there any connection uh, to the conference call that they held the next day demonizing the Employee Free Choice Act? Well, this is where the rubber sort of hits the road. Uh, the downgrading of the rating combined with the hosting of the call so it creates the impression that this is such a hot 
topic for the business community that Congress probably shouldn't touch it. So it, it, it catapults one atop the other. So while Citi says, well, we have no horse in this fight, or horse in this race, sorry, uh, their actions combined together create this, this aura around the Employee Free Choice Act that surely are designed to influence the way Congress perceives the legislation. Now, mind you, they did not upgrade the rating of unionized uh, companies like Safeway, which by their own analysis, would likely benefit from the Employee Free Choice Act. So it was a one-way street with them. Is it also true that the Citigroup analyst who actually made the call on downgrading the stock on Tuesday was the same analyst who moderated the anti-union yeah. call on Wednesday? Same person. Yeah, that's tr that is correct. It's the same person. Her name is uh, Deborah Weiswing. Has Citigroup responded to the inference here that their stock, their, their ratings division is not impartial? That they're actually using their ratings division for political purposes? Have they responded to that? Uh, after the story was published, we got a second comment from Citigroup uh, saying that uh, their ratings division is solely independent from the bank uh, and that the bank has, again, not taking a, has not taken a stance on the Employee Free Choice Act. But you have to remember, Citigroup spent over $5 million lobbying in 2008 and is part of a group called the Financial Services Roundtable, which has lobbied in the past year on the Employee Free Choice Act. So claims of impartiality are suspect. Is there any restriction, Sam, on, on banks that are on the public dole using, effectively using our own resources to lobby like this, to insert themselves into the political process? Is this, is this more than just unseemly? Well, there are no restrictions that I know of, although there are members of Congress after we first reported on the Bank of America call, uh, specifically Congressman Keith Ellison, raised this issue when the banking CEOs came into town to testify before Congress. He says, well, we're paying you billions upon billions of dollars. Why would you then turn around and use that money either for forums or to lobby the government on legislation that is, in essence, designed to help working Americans? It doesn't make any sense. So there is a bubbling outrage. I don't know if there's any legislative vehicles at this moment that are designed to curb that influence peddling. That might be an idea. I'm just saying. Be. <laughs> Sam Stein, <laughs> White House correspondent for Huffington Post. Great reporting on this, Sam. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rachel.